Red Bull Rookies Cup, it's the toughest playing field that you can play in. Last year I had kids from 14 different countries competing in eight different races. You really got to have the right attitude. You got to have a big heart and a ton of motivation. You got to compete against the best kids, you know, in front of 200,000 fans. If that's not pressure, I don't know what is. I'm just scared. Yes, I am. I'm scared. At any level, MotoGP is what you strive to be if you want to be the best that there is in the world. gave me this talent and I want to use it as best I can. And I was watching like every race on the internet and all that and I was like thinking, talking to my dad, wouldn't that be cool if I was there and then once I got accepted I was so happy. And Stock's got an absolute flyer there. He's head down looking behind him, it's fanned out a behind him, Stafford 24 is in the... Oh, and he got caught up with somebody else. Fagerhaug is crashed, my goodness, what an absolute disaster for Sterler. It's all gone wrong for him this weekend. Now, who's going to make it? Who's bravest? It's Mayur that's bravest on the brakes, but Skoltz get a better drive on the inside coming out. It's side by side, they're rubbing elbows now. Skoltz and Mayur rubbing elbows into the left-hander. Oh, and that's Harry Stafford. It goes down and he's clipped by another rider. Harry Stafford goes down. Let's hope he's OK. Oh, and up the inside comes Fagerhau. Fagerhau with the red helmet. Way up the inside, he does the Valentino last lap manoeuvre there. He's done it brilliantly. He's done an absolutely sensational job. Sterler Fagerhau turn his wheel weekend around completely and it's Sterla Fagerhaug who wins from Matthew Skoltz and Danny Kent. Red Bull Rookies Cup main initiative is to try and create a program for 13 to 17 year old kids to be able to then step directly into Grand Prix racing. It's a program that, that Last year had kids from 14 different countries competing in eight different races. When I started racing in the mid 80s, you know, it was a set of my uncle's borrowed dirt track leathers and probably a helmet that didn't fit exactly right and whatever boots I could find at the time and going and racing, uh, you know, on a bike that I had prepared. The Red Bull Rookies Cup gives these kids a first class operation, first class equipment, the best tires, the best suspension engineers behind, set behind everything. MotoGP is what, if you've ever become a road racer of any kind at any level, what you strive to be if you want to be the best that there is in the world. So from a rider's standpoint, it's the toughest playing field that you can play in. It's a sport that at the top pays some really, really big paychecks. Any place in Europe, anybody who races Grand Prix bikes is obviously just as big a name as any sports star here in America. We start here in Jerez where Sunday sees like 200,000 people packing the place and that just really buoys the level of intensity about the whole race meeting and the kids sort of rise to the occasion. It's just a little different than what a normal teenager's life is like. Last season went really good for me actually. I won four races out of, I think it was nine. I ended up winning the championship so that's why I'm here racing this. There's no doubt that coming into 2009, we have some uh, favorites for the cup. That's still a Fagerhaug, he's in his third year now. He was tremendous force last year. Considering I've been like one of the fastest guys from the beginning, it's hard to 
improve on your riding when you're at the top already in this cup. Still, it's not like I'm freaking out like it's too much pressure on me. It's not like that. We know that the three Americans that are here are strong. Benny Solis won the AMA Cup, and he didn't do that by accident. So I would expect that as he gets into his stride, Benny and Jake Gagne and Hayden Gillum, they'll be fighting at the front as well. Really, the, there are two ways that riders can get into the Rookies Cup. Riders can send in their CVs and convince us that they really should be considered for selection. Then there are championships around the world which we take a look at and really invite the best riders into the selection process. We look for kids that have good attitudes. We look for kids that don't, after the first practice session, and you know they're not the fastest kid out there, they come out with a list of excuses. Look for a kid that asks questions. Hey, how can I better myself? How can I work better? How can I work with the team better? There's lots of kids out there that, given the right opportunity, I, I think could do this. But you've really got to have the right attitude. You've got to have a big heart and a ton of motivation. There's a very intense level of competition here. And perhaps, I, you know, I've heard some of the young Americans say that things are a bit rough here. You know, there's a lot of elbowing that goes on. And that's something that they've got to get used to. But it is a bit of, shock, of a shock for them at first. but it looks like Stoltz has got another good start. Stoltz it is who pulls across to the left-hand side to get a run into the first corner. And uh, Hayden Gillum seems to have problems. He's not going anywhere in a hurry, I think. How Vagahau pulls out of the slipstream. Stoltz comes across the track. Brian Marino is there, number 21 as well. They're hard on the brakes. Vagahau goes up the inside and into the lead. Trying to chase this man. Alex Christensen, and down goes Christensen. These guys have not learned from yesterday. It shows their lack of experience. Marino with Fagerhau with the red helmet has looked up the inside very nicely through Fagerhau. And three of them in side by side. Well, that's desperate stuff as they go past one either side of Fagerhau. Absolutely sensational stuff there. Fagerhau pass it now by Danny Kent, and it's his favourite passing manoeuvre. Kent has done that to Fagerhau now three times. Kent runs wide. Fagerhau gets the drive. Kent is in front of it. Really, Kent should have it. It's Danny Kent that's going to win his first Rookies Cup race from Sterling Bagahal. Everybody's more aggressive and uh, break a lot earlier, but run the corners a lot faster. It's it's just a little bit harder. This is where you want to be if you want to, you know, be at the top and race against the fastest guys. And this Europe is where you want to be. You're 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, and you get you got to travel clear across the world to be here, and then you got to compete against the best kids, you know, in front of 200,000 fans. If that's not pressure, I don't know what is. The race didn't go like I wanted it to. I mean, second to last lap, the bike just started sputtering, but I didn't finish the race. Yeah, we're going straight home now, and then hopefully when we go to get to Italy, it'll be a better weekend for me. the Red Bull suit from the first year of the Rookies Cup. I don't know, I'm just afraid to wear it. I don't want to crash in it because I'm kind of keeping it as a memory because that year went really good for me. Most of the time I'm just nervous, but I'm trying to calm myself down. But before I race, if I'm real calm, I normally don't do good. So I know it's a good sign when I'm nervous. I can do sometimes 50 to 100 laps because it's pretty small. But it's a good workout and I like it. I play the mode of game a lot, just like so you know where the track goes around, you know, the configuration, what turn comes up next. But uh, the game doesn't help much with anything like bumps or anything. It's just the the shape of the track and all that. When they ask me like what kind of motorcycles and I usually say the one that drags the knee and they're like, hey, really? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, Aren't you scared? Aren't you yes I am. I get scared, you know, but I've been there, and I know what Benny's feeling. 
And when you race, it's like, okay, crashes are, are normal. So when I see my boy crash, and as long as he gets up right away or he's moving and he's okay, then I feel okay. I guess I change from fear to excitement. It's really exciting to see him race. <laughs> Sometimes we stretch it to the limit, like, okay, we can't pay this bill because we got to go buy tires for the 125. So my wife kind of gets mad. She tells me, well, you're not going to pay the bill. You're going to buy on the tires. And I said, well, we got to go raise. Uh, my mom and my dad mostly support me because they, uh, they work really hard you know, to help me do it. That's so. what he wants. Because if I was in his position, he'd be doing the same for me, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> she looks at you know, this is a gift that God gave my son, and he's putting all his energy and effort to it. Now we need to be with him. We're leaving tomorrow around 11, around there. And then, you know, we arrive in Italy, and like, I think the next day. I'm the one who takes him to the airport. So, you know, I stay home nervous, <laughs> waiting for them to come back. I got to think about it, like, is this really happening, you know? So, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs>